Welcome to Apps in Law, I'm Brett Burney. Today's app is CardHop from Flexibits, which is the same company that develops the Fantastic Fantastical calendar app, which is now a service. Fantastical is a superb app that lets you type in a date or an appointment in a natural language form, and then the app parses out all of your input into a bona fide calendar appointment. CardHop brings that same natural language capability to your contacts. Now I'm going to anticipate that the first question that you have, and because it was the same question that I had, why would you use another app for contacts when you have a contacts app already built into your iPhone and iPad? Now that's an excellent question and I'm gonna show you the best features of CardHop so you can make your own decision. But the brilliant aspect about this is you don't have to decide between one or the other because CardHop synchronizes your contacts through iCloud with your regular contacts app. Now once in CardHop, all of your contacts will be available by tapping the circle button in the middle bottom of the screen. Then over on the far left, you have a favorites button and you can determine which contacts are your favorites. Next to that is the clock icon, which represents the most recent contacts that you have viewed. And then to the right of that main contacts button is a little cute present and that represents birthdays for all of your contacts. And then you have the settings icon in the far right bottom corner. Now, one of the most prevalent features on basically every screen in CardHop is the search bar, typically at the bottom here. You can tap into that and start searching for a contact. But this is actually more than just a search bar. In fact, CardHop calls it a parser because it is actively parsing the information you type into it. You can actually use this for much more than just searching. Uh, for example, I'm going to use some video examples that CardHop puts on their own website and actually narrated by my good friend and nerd hero, David Sparks. You can see that he is typing in information that he wants to add to a specific contact here. And then next, you can even add a birthday to a contact just by typing the contact's name and then the birth date. You can actually use the parser for taking action on a contact. You can see here that it's very simple to just type in call Gunther and it will actually give you that capability to call Gunther directly from the CardHop app. But I find that Parser to be uh, most useful for adding a new contact. Uh, you know when you have your phone and you want to get somebody's details, uh, their name and phone number, for example, an email address, uh, usually, well, in the past, we would give them our phone and they would tap into the field, you know, to put in their first name and then tap another field for their last name and then tap the email, is it their home or work email, and then their, their phone numbers, is it the home number or the mobile phone number? It just, it took a long time. But what I really love about using CardHop and the parser there is that you can just start typing in somebody's name, and I'm gonna use here the name Beauregard Smith, and when you're done typing that person's name, I'm just gonna hit a space bar and start typing in their email address here. And then I, I don't stop there, I just keep going in that parser box. I am typing in their phone number here. Now, you've just been watching me type all this information in here and you can see that as I was typing, CardHop was parsing that information into a new contact so that you can see down here at the bottom, I can tap add new contact and all of that information is immediately inputted into my contacts without having to tap into different fields, etc. So let's look at the flip side now. How can you more easily share your contact information with someone that maybe doesn't have CardHop with that nifty little parser box? Well, one of the best ways CardHop does this is through something they call the business cards, although I like to think of it a little bit more, more general as like a general contact card. Now you can see in the main contacts list here and at the very top, my name, and right to the right of it, there's that little orange icon. It looks like a little business card, if you will. If you tap on that, you can see immediately that the screen goes blank to show my business card. Now you can turn it obviously to the landscape mode so that you can show it to somebody a little bit easier. You can just show this to somebody and 
they can use the camera on their mobile device to simply scan that QR code. And actually, if you tap that code, it will enlarge it so it's a little bit easier to scan. Now, what's really great about these business cards or contact cards is you can have several of them set up. And this one, I've just put in all of my information for my Apps and Law blog. Uh, so that if I want to share that with somebody quickly, I can just do that. But you can set up another card where it just has your professional deets inside it, your work address, for example, and then you can set up a personal card where it just has your mobile number, uh, information you want to share just with close personal friends. Now inside this card, you can tap edit and customize the way it looks just a little bit. You can decide what pieces of information you want to include on that card. Or if you go all the way out to the settings of Card Hop, you can then tap on business cards at the very top and then you can see the list there and you can further customize or add new business cards there. Card Hop also lets you quickly call somebody or FaceTime someone or a variety of other actions directly from the Card Hop app without having to navigate into different menus or search for somebody. I'll show another example here from the David Sparks videos on the Flexibits website for Card Hop. You can see he can customize actually the quick actions for each contact. You can swipe to the right to reveal those quick actions and then you can change which buttons that you want to see there for each contact. There's also some quick actions available when you tap the search bar or the parser box. Uh, you can customize these as well so that they're always available there at the bottom. One last thing I like about Card Hop is how easy it is to add notes to a contact. Uh, whenever I meet somebody or have coffee with them, I like to just jot down a quick note about where we met or what we discussed, you know, just to remind myself so that the next time I reach out to them, I have a little bit of a historical chronology. One thing I really like about Card Hop here is this little add timestamp option down at the bottom. This is great because you can just simply tap on this, it adds the date and the timestamp on there, and then you can write your note. Again, I would typically manually type in all this information, but it's just really neat to have that shortcut there to quickly add the date and timestamp of when I'm writing that note. So are all of these features in Card Hop worth you parting with $5 uh, when you already have a contacts app built into your iPhone or iPad? Well, obviously that's ultimately up to you and maybe how much that you rely on getting access to your contacts. But any changes I make to a contact in Card Hop or in contacts gets synchronized back and forth to the other app. So I really am not having to decide on using one app specifically because all of the information syncs back and forth. For myself, I find I go into Card Hop a lot more often just simply because it's so much easier to add some details to a contact or to make a phone call quickly or to add notes. And just, I had that confidence that all that information is gonna get synchronized back to iCloud as well. So all of that information is available not only in the other iPhone or iPad, but also in my Mac and in my Windows computers as well. If you like learning about new and exciting apps for your mobile devices, uh, don't forget to click the subscribe button and give us a thumbs up here on the video. I also record a podcast that you can find at appsinlaw.com where you can sign up for updates as well. Thanks for watching.